Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'll discuss two optimization problems in this video. In the first problem, we have an increasing sequence of real numbers, A0, A1, A2, and so on. A0 is equal to 1. We are interested in the infimum of the sum n from 0 to infinity, a n plus 1 divided by the cube of a n. To have a better understanding of this sum, it may be good to focus on a special case. A tractable special case is when we choose the sequence a n to be a geometric progression. Suppose that a n is equal to beta to the power n. Our sum is beta to the n plus 1 over beta to 3 n. We can take beta outside the sum. We have summation n from 0 to infinity, beta to the minus 2 to the n. That's a geometric series. For conversions, we need beta to the minus 2 to be strictly less than 1, so beta must be greater than 1. The sum is equal to beta divided by 1 minus beta to the minus 2. If we multiply the numerator and denominator by beta squared, we get beta cubed divided by beta squared minus 1. If we have a geometric progression with a ratio strictly greater than 1, the sum is finite and is equal to beta cubed divided by beta squared minus 1. To minimize the sum, we need to minimize this function of beta, call it g of beta, we can obtain the first derivative and second derivative. After simplifying, the second derivative can be put in this form. For every beta greater than 1, the second derivative is strictly positive, which means that this function is convex. The first derivative is equal to 0 if beta is equal to the square root of 3. Since the second derivative is positive, this function has a minimum at beta equal to the square root of 3. The minimum is equal to the cube of the square root of 3, that's 3 square root of 3, divided by 3 minus 1, that's 2. If we restrict the sequence to be a geometric sequence with ratio beta greater than 1, this is the value of the sum as a function of beta. The least we can get is 3 square root 3 over 2. This means that the sequence that minimizes this sum is a n equal to the square root of 3 to the power n or 3 to the power n over 2. In this case, a n plus 1 divided by a n cubed is equal to the square root of 3 divided by 3 to the power n. This sequence satisfies that 3 to the power n times a n plus 1 divided by a n cubed is equal to a constant, which is the square root of 3. The infimum we want to obtain does not have this restriction. We just have an increasing sequence of real numbers such that a0 is equal to 1. So what we will do is to guess that this is indeed the minimum, even if we use a general sequence satisfying the condition mentioned in the problem statement. To prove that this is the minimum, Recall that the logarithmic function is a concave function. x0 to x big N, those are positive real numbers. Mu N is non-negative for every positive integer N, and the sum of the mu's is equal to 1. So here we have a convex combination of the x's. Because the logarithm is a concave function, len the convex combination is greater than or equal to the sum N from 0 to N, mu N times len xn. If every mu N is strictly between 0 and 1, we have equality here if the x's are all equal. We can exponentiate both sides. We get that the convex combination is superior to e to the power sum n from 0 to n. And I can write this term here as the natural logarithm of xn to the power mu n. The exponent is len, the product, and this is equal to the product. Remember that we are operating based on our initial insight that this is indeed the minimum. And if this is the minimum and it is achievable, using the geometric progression, square root 3 to the power n, then those terms are constant, are the same. All of them are equal to the square root of 3. Based on this, we will use this inequality with xn equal to 3 to the n, a n plus 1 over a n cubed. This inequality provides a lower bound on the sum. What we have on the right-hand side is a lower bound, and we want this lower bound to be achievable so that it is the minimum. And hopefully, we get it to be 3 square root 3 divided by 2 in the limit as big n tends to infinity. In the sum of interest, we don't have this 3 to the power n, so we multiply also by 3 to the minus n. This is part of the coefficients of the convex combination. 3 to the minus n is non-negative for every n, but we also need the sum of these weights to be equal to 1. So we divide 3 to the minus n by the sum g from 0 to big n, 3 to the minus g. This is mu n. Applying the inequality, the lower bound is the product small n from 0 to big n, we have xn, which is 3 to the n, a n plus 1 over a n cubed. Mu n is 3 to the minus n over the sum. This is a finite geometric series with n plus 1 terms. This is its value, 3 over 2, between brackets 1 minus 3 to the minus n plus 1. Let's call this sum L. On the left-hand side, 3 to the minus n times 3 to the n, that's 1. So we have the sum of interest divided by this sum, which is L. 
we can move to the other side. Let's rewrite this product as three products. We have the product small n from zero to big n. We have three to the n times three to the minus n divided by L. We have a product involving a n plus one. I write the product with index small m from zero to big n a n plus one to the power three to the minus m divided by L. We also have a product downstairs. The exponent is three times three to the minus n divided by L. We have three to the minus n plus one divided by L. In this product here, do the change of index n equal to m plus one. When m is zero, small n is one. When m is big n, small n is big n plus one. m plus one becomes small n. Three to the minus m becomes three to the minus small n plus one. Compare the terms of the product that we have in the numerator and that in the denominator. This is exactly like that. The difference is that in the numerator, small n is from one to big n plus one. In the denominator, small n is from zero to big n. This ratio here is simply a big n plus one raised to the power three to the minus n plus one. And this is divided by L, which is this sum here. Downstairs, we have a zero. When small n is equal to zero, we have three over L. A zero is equal to one. Our sequence is increasing. And since A zero is equal to one, then A n plus one is greater than or equal to one. This ratio here is lower bounded by one. The lower bound that we have is L, the product small n from zero to big n, three to the n, three to the minus n divided by L. This is L. What about this sum here? We can do it in a number of ways. The method I use here is to make the sum telescopic. The summand is n over three to the n. Let's try to write it as a constant times n plus another constant divided by three to the n minus the same function of n, but with n replaced by n plus one. If we combine these two terms, we get one over three to the n plus one, and then we get this bracket to match the left-hand side. We need the bracket to be equal to three n. So two gamma one is equal to three, gamma one is three over two, and two gamma two should be equal to gamma one. So gamma two is equal to three over four. The sum n over three to the n is equal to this telescopic sum. When a small n is equal to zero, we get three over four. And then there is another term, which is minus three over two, big n plus one plus three fourth, all over three to the big n plus one. This is a lower bound on this summation. And it is valid for every positive integer big n. So we can take the limit of both sides as big n tends to infinity. On the left-hand side, we get the sum of interest. On the right-hand side, this bracket tends to one as big n tends to infinity. This term here goes to zero. We have a linear function of n in the numerator and exponential function in the denominator. And this tends to one. Thus, the limit is this three over two times three to the power two thirds times three fourth. This is one half. The lower limit is indeed three, the square root of three divided by two. The infimum of this sum is this number here. In fact, it is a minimum. It is achievable by using the sequence a n equal to three to the power n over two. In the second optimization problem, we are interested in maximizing the function f of two variables, x and y, which are positive real numbers. The function has two parameters, alpha and beta. They are also real valued and positive. f of x and y is the minimum of these three terms, x alpha over y and y plus beta over x. Suppose that x is greater than or equal to alpha over y. So this term is superior to that one. Because of this, the minimum that we have here is the minimum of alpha over y and y plus beta over x. If this condition is true, we can just focus on the minimum of these two terms. Suppose that you have two positive real numbers, gamma and eta. If gamma is greater than or equal to eta, the square root of gamma eta is greater than or equal to the square root of eta times eta, and this is eta. If eta is greater than or equal to gamma, then the square root of gamma eta is greater than or equal to the square root of gamma times gamma, which is gamma. So we have this inequality that the square root of gamma and eta is greater than or equal to the minimum of gamma and eta with equality if and only if gamma is equal to eta. I employ this idea here. We have the minimum of alpha over y, y plus beta over x. The minimum of these two terms is upper bounded by the square root of the product. When we multiply, we get the constant alpha plus alpha beta divided by x, y. This is an upper bound on the function f of x and y under the condition that x is greater than or equal to alpha over y. This condition is equivalent to x, y greater than or equal to alpha. 
which is equivalent to 1 over xy less than or equal to 1 over alpha. We can do further upper bounding. This square root is less than or equal to alpha plus alpha beta. 1 over xy is upper bounded by 1 over alpha. So the upper bound that we get is the square root of alpha plus beta. To have equality here, xy is equal to alpha. To have this inequality satisfied with equality, alpha over y is equal to y plus beta over x. But y is equal to alpha over x, then x must be equal to alpha plus beta over x. x squared is equal to alpha plus beta. x is the square root of alpha plus beta, and y is alpha over x. The second case is x less than or equal to alpha over y. Now x is less than this second term. f of x and y is the minimum of x and this third term y plus beta over x. Let's use the exact same idea. The minimum of these two positive real quantities is less than or equal to the square root of the product. Now the product is xy plus beta. If x is less than or equal to alpha over y, then xy is less than or equal to alpha. f of xy is also less than or equal to the square root of alpha plus beta, like in the first case. We also have that xy is equal to alpha. If these two terms are equal, then we have x equal to alpha over x plus beta over x. Again, x is equal to the square root of alpha plus beta, and y is alpha over x. The conclusion here is consistent with what we have obtained in the first case. So the minimum of the function f of x and y is the square root of alpha plus beta. To achieve this minimum, x is the square root of alpha plus beta, y is alpha over the square root of alpha plus beta.